Hey all, I uh, think it's time and uh, we can get started. So, yeah, uh, I hope everyone is able to see the presentation. Can someone confirm whether they are able to see the slide? Okay, uh, so let's get started. Uh, so this uh, session is all about uh, enabling the REST support for Apache CTX. Uh, before I start the session, I would like to thank uh, Sheen, uh, Tim, and few others in the Apache com CTX community uh for uh, helping us and providing an opportunity to uh, implement this particular rest module into apache ctx uh, which helped us a lot uh, in our uh, in our clinical uh, product which basically deals with uh, narrative text analysis and uh, basically when we were evaluating a different nlp engine for our use case uh, we found ctx uh, to be the right fit but unfortunately we didn't uh, find the rest support which we were looking for so that's how we started uh, uh, venturing out uh, some of the options available and then eventually uh, ended up enabling the rest support so that was a quick recap of uh, what we did okay uh, to get started uh, as uh, Sheen I mentioned yesterday, like Apache CTX is, is a natural language processing system for extraction of uh, information from electronic medical record, clinical free text. And uh, predominantly it was a desktop based application, uh, at least when I started evaluating it, uh, that's how I saw it. Uh, so basically to enable REST support in uh, CTX, uh, we have added a new module uh, it is a CTX code base, uh, which is nothing but CTX uh, iPhone web iPhone REST. And uh, what REST basically does to CTX is uh, it lets uh, all client applications built on various different languages uh, to talk to CTX basically. So that makes uh, now, uh, CTX uh, to be used by a lot of other third party applications which run on various languages. And then with REST enable, the integration becomes far more simple. Uh, so that's the basic uh, crux of enabling the REST support in Apache CTX. So basically, I would like to touch base on all the components uh, that is involved in this particular uh, CTX web risk, which eventually helps uh, to expose the REST endpoint from CTX. So the key components are uh, the CTX web REST model code base, then uh, metamorphosis, then UMLS, which is nothing but unified medical language system. And the next component is CTX dictionary creator GUI. And in our use case, we will be demonstrating how we ended up using MySQL database uh, for the CTX engine to analyze the clinical text. And for deployment in our use case, we were using Apache Tomcat as the application server. Uh, basically you can use any uh, application server of your choice, but in this use case, we'll be covering the deployment in Apache Tomcat. Okay, so we will uh, basically walk through each of the components uh, which we see in the slide. Okay, uh, 
so first to start off like uh, the basic question many people have is like where do i find the ctx code base and then how do i uh, build the ctx web rest model so basically uh, you can pull out the source code from the github repository as shown in the slide or we can also pull up the latest code base from the svn trunk as uh, mentioned in the slide so that is pretty much about the ctx code base and uh, webrest module uh, so once you check out the code you can find out uh, ctx webrest as a separate module uh, it has not been included uh, in the uh, root palm of ctx project because so this can be built on uh, demand basis uh, if if it's required for a particular user you can go ahead and build this web address module separately so it is not currently included in the root form that is one information because we get a lot of questions saying like when i build the ctx i'm not able to uh, uh, find the ctx web rest war file available so that is basically because a ctx is uh, uh, ctx root form does not have this module included and then we will touch base on uh, the other key components, which is nothing but metamorphosis. Uh, metamorphosis is nothing but the UMLS installation wizard. And UMLS, as I said earlier, is a unified medical language system, uh, which is nothing but repository of uh, biomedical vocabularies developed by uh, US National Library of Medicine. So it's basically a consolidation of uh, vocabularies from different uh, dictionaries like RxNorm, Snowmed CT, Medra, and things like that. So to start off with the installation of UMLS, uh, you have to access the link which is mentioned in the slide, uh, which will uh, let you download uh, close to five GB of uh, files. Uh, predominant files are uh, the ones with .nlm extensions and uh, another key uh, file as highlighted in the slide is this my mmsys.zip. So basically you have to unzip this file and then if you are using Windows operating system, you can start off the installation wizard by running this run64.bat as highlighted in the slide or else uh, if you are using Mac, you can uh, start the installation by running run underscore mac.sh file as well. Okay, and uh, in, in this use case, we have, uh, I was using the uh, Windows operating system. So we were using run64.bat. So once you double click on that, uh, it basically brings up the UMLS installation wizard. And there right in the center, you can see the install UMLS button. So once you click on that install UMLS button, it will take you to the next slide uh, where you basically have to point to the source uh, directly where you have downloaded the, all the files related to the UMLS installation. And then probably you also have to create a destination folder where you want all the uh, uh, metamorphosis uh, and UMLS installation files to be written to. So once you browse the destination file path, you can click on OK, which will take you to a new configuration screen. And you, you have to click on the new configuration button as, uh, as I'm pointing here. Once you click on the new configuration button, it will uh, bring up the license agreement notice. And then you have to click on the accept button. After click on accept button, basically it brings up the default subset uh, configuration selection screen where you can select uh, either uh, uh, level zero uh, sources uh, which does not require any additional license agreement or uh, you can select level zero plus nomad CT, uh, whatever uh, of your personal choice and then you can click on okay. Once you click on OK, it will uh, take you to the uh, Meta Thesaurus uh, configuration screen, where the key thing to be noted here is the destination uh, folder. 
where uh, uh, where you have to uh, where the dot rrs file will be uh, extracted out. So this path has to be noted down, uh, whatever I'm highlighting here in the destination, because this path will be used by uh, the CTX dictionary creator GUI to uh, load all the uh, libraries and vocabulary. So we just have to make note of this destination path. And once uh, we point out the destination path, uh, right here in the same window, you have a done button. When you click on that, uh, it just pops up another uh, option saying begin subset. So you can just click on that, which will uh, start the uh, UMLS installation, and this may uh, run for uh, several minutes. And then finally, you will be able to see all the uh, respective RR files under the following uh, destination location, which you have selected. So that pretty much covers uh, the metamorphosis and, and the UMLS installation. And the next component uh, which we will be talking about here is uh, CTX uh, Dictionary Creator GUI. So Dictionary Creator GUI uh, is uh, built in CTX to generate uh, certain custom scripts uh, uh, for the library uh, for the libraries like uh, Madras, Nomad, or uh, the Rx non libraries of your choice. So to start the dictionary creator GUI, uh, you have to get into your CTX home folder where you have downloaded the CTX user installation. And then you need to navigate inside the bin folder and there you will see a batch file called run dictionary creator back created or back. So once you double click on the batch file, uh, it basically uh, brings up the dictionary creator green screen. And here, as uh, highlighted in the slide, you have to select the uh, meta folder inside which you have this RRF files that needs to be pointed out in the UMLS installation folder here. The moment you select uh, the UMLS installation folder, it will start loading all the vocabularies and the semantic type as you see in the screen. And then you have the option to select uh, the vocabularies and uh, TUI terms of uh, your choice. And then here uh, in the dictionary name column, you can uh, key in any custom dictionary name of your choice. And then you can click on uh, build dictionary, which in turn will start uh, creating uh, the script files uh, for all the vocabularies and semantic types, whatever the user has chosen. And then eventually all the uh, resources that got generated as part of uh, running the dictionary creator, uh, dictionary creator GUI will be available under uh, the CTX home slash resources slash org Apache CTX dictionary lookup fast and then with the dictionary name. So in, in GUI, if you have selected custom, uh, you can find it under fast slash custom. Or if you are given any custom name, uh, the, you can find it uh, in the uh, corresponding folder name of whatever you have created. And basically the script file, which got generated after uh, running uh, the CT. The dictionary creator GUI will look something like this. And currently we have a limitation uh, as in like uh, the script file, whatever generated by dictionary creator GUI will be, uh, will be aligned to HSQLDB and uh, it you will not be uh, if, if you want to uh, use the script file against uh, any other db for instance like mysql or Oracle or something we have to manually tweak the script file to align to the database of our choice so currently we don't have a provision where uh, you can select a database of your choice and then uh, select the script so that uh, that limitation is still there I believe. So in our use case, what we did was we were using uh, MySQL DB 
uh, to populate whatever scripts that got generated as part of uh, custom dictionary created GUI. So what we did was uh, we took the HSQL DB scripts and then tweaked it to uh, fit to MySQL DB. And then uh, we just uh, split the each script file into uh, say like uh, multiple parts. And uh, what we did was uh, we opened the uh, like several instances of MySQL client and then ran uh, each uh, individual script files which we have fitted across and then we populated the mysql db so basically uh, even after uh, splitting the database scripts into say four to six parts it will still take a few hours to populate uh, the complete uh, uh, vocabularies and uh, terms into the database so that is the uh, that, that is one main reason why we have to run uh, this script files in multiple instances rather than running it in one instance, which may take uh, several hours to populate all the data. Uh, and then once uh, scripts are split, we just load the MySQL DB with the scripts. And once the MySQL DB is ready, now uh, we can. Uh, Week, uh, the C takes a web based model configuration to uh, connect to that particular DB. So, how do we do that? It's like uh, in the C takes web based module, uh, we have an XML file called custom dictionary.xml, which holds the connection details about uh, which DB it should connect to while the application is running. So, basically, uh, that file is available under CTX web rest uh, src main resources org apache ctx dictionary lookup fast under that you will find this custom dictionary.xml file so basically uh, uh, that file will look something like this and then you can edit the a jdbc url in that xml file and then probably you can uh, 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 you can you can just uh, configure the url uh, uh, under which the mysql uh, db is running and you can also change the database name under which you have populated uh, the scripts which we talked about earlier and you also have to uh, give, give the corresponding username password credentials to connect to that particular db so once uh, this xml is uh, tweaked uh, to connect to the MySQL DB, which you have uh, set up in the last step. Uh, then you can save this file and then you can build the CTX WebRest module separately. And uh, once you build this module, uh, uh, you under the under that module's target folder, you will uh, get a war file, which is nothing but a web archive file. And it will be named as ctex web restwar So once you have the war file ready, you can de deploy this web archive file into oh, any of the application server of uh, your choice. In this case, we have chosen to deploy it on Apache Tomcat. And once uh, it's deployed, basically, uh, it eventually means that like you have enabled uh, uh, the rest support in uh, CTX, and then uh, we are all set to access the rest endpoint. And uh, the rest endpoint will look something like this uh, as shown in the slide like uh, your uh, host name colon port slash uh, CTX hyphen web hyphen rest slash service slash analyze, and then uh, question mark pipeline is equal to default. By default, uh, we are using the default paper, which is available as part of the clinical uh, pipeline. But if you want to do any detailed analysis, uh, we can use uh, the pipe, full paper, which uh, has this negation and other uh, papers. So basically, if you want to run extensive analysis, we can use analyze, analyze question mark pipeline is equal to full. With that, you will be able to uh, do extensive analysis on this using this rest endpoint 
And not only that, uh, we have also exposed uh, a web URL in this uh, inside this module, uh, so that uh, you can uh, you can just access the web URL and then uh, analyze the narrative text of your choice to ensure that uh, the web module is running successfully before even uh, hitting the rest endpoint. So the web uh, URL looks something like this, as uh, shown in the slide, like uh, host name colon port slash uh, ctex hyphen web address slash index dot jsp. So it's a it's a it's a web module which has been exposed, and then uh, once you key in any narrative text in this web module and uh, try to do analysis behind the scenes, it will uh, uh, internally make a rest call as well. Uh, so this slide basically shows how uh, the web URL looks like. And then once you access this index.jsp, basically you will get a, a, a web portal where uh, you have an option to key in your uh, narrative text as shown in the slide. So in this example, I have given uh, something like patient as cancer. And once after entering the narrative text, if you click on analyze button, uh, behind the scenes uh, uh, from the web application, we will be making uh, an Ajax call to the rest endpoint by passing this uh, narrative text payload, whatever we have given. And then here you can see uh, the output that is returned from the CTX engine. So basically in this case, you can see the output will be of JSON format. And then here it has written uh, disease disorder mentioned as cancer with the respective uh, CUI terms and then the coding scheme, which is nothing but SNOMED CT and the US. So by doing so, we can ensure that uh, the web model is running. And once this is running, uh, you can expose this first endpoint or whatever I'm highlighting in this slide. Uh, and through this, uh, you can, with this response, rest endpoint, you can make uh, any uh, application built in any language to talk to CTX engine and then uh, get the text analyzed and uh, written back uh, the response. So in our use case, uh, where uh, we are uh, uh, where we are dealing with the product where the adverse event reactions are uh, reported. In our use case, we basically run a CTX uh, uh, application as a separate uh, web, web application exposing this rest endpoint. And whenever our uh, reporter keys in the narrative text and then uh, click on analyze, we will just uh, post the payload to the CTX rest endpoint. Which will uh, which will figure out different mentions, and then the reporter will have option to choose uh, whatever varied mentions, and then that will be created as as part of adverse event reaction. So that is the use case which we have uh, built in our organization. Uh, and uh, this was pretty much I wanted to cover as part of uh, this support in. Apache CTX and uh, hope it was useful. Thank you. Thank you. That was uh, extremely thorough. I think it you showed a lot of ways that you could modify that uh, REST installation to do uh, whatever is needed on uh, your site. That was very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions? Uh, one common question which we used to see in the mailing list is like, uh, why not use uh, Spring Boot rather than using the traditional Spring Framework? So basically, uh, how I would take that is like, uh, CTX already has a Spring Framework embedded into it. So we don't want to bloat uh, uh, CTX again with something like uh, uh, Spring Boot because uh, CTX as such is already heavy. 
That is true. <laughs> and even though I think Spring Boot uh, is a more robust framework and whatnot, uh, just using pure Spring uh, allows you to stick to, I'm going to say, basic standards a little more. Uh, Okay, regarding the question on performance, uh, what we could see is uh, uh, we were able to uh, scale the performance by running multiple instances of uh, the CTIG instance. And that is one reason why we went ahead with uh, uh, loading all the vocabularies to MySQL DB so that uh, multiple instances of uh, CTIG's REST module can talk to one single database. So that way we were able to um, achieve better performance. And then to answer another question on UML's credentials, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm still puzzled about this uh, connectivity to UML. So basically what we did was uh, we, uh, we generated the script out of uh, the custom dictionary GUI and then loaded everything uh, to our MySQL DB locally. So we were basically not uh, uh, accessing uh, the UMLS resources at all. Uh, all the calls were talking to uh, the database itself, which is loaded locally. In fact, I'm not even sure like we can, it is, it is kind of legal to do that. I, I still have this question open on my side. Sheen, any idea on that? Yes, actually, uh, you can, okay, so the agreements that we came up with uh, with the NLM uh, was that a person could not distribute a copy or a modified copy of the UMLS. And what that means is you cannot, you know, for instance, download the UMLS and then using your password and then start handing it off to other people. Now, what you did was you basically downloaded it, created a modification, and then we're running it at a site. But you were not literally passing it around. So that was, it's kind of goofy, but it actually does lie within the bounds of the original agreement. Yeah, and when the REST service was started, uh, or if you you know create your own REST service, you can always ping the UM or the NLM and say, "I'm using the MLS. Here are my um, username and password." And then the REST service just keeps on running, uh, and other people can use it. But again, you are not passing around an entire modified copy of the MLS. Okay. Yeah. To answer the question, other question on uh, the garbage collection and heap size, etc. So basically, the uh, module not the CTX engine uh, only once, and uh, after every analysis, it doesn't uh, reload it again. So that way, we didn't see any of the keep space issues or uh, the garbage collection issues. Okay, I think we still have a few minutes left uh, and then you're off the hook. <laughs> so are there any last minute questions? Anything is fair game. <clears throat> okay, uh, SQL Lite. 
I think, as Gandhi Rajan said, uh, they manually modified the scripts that was produced for HSQL. And it seems to me that you do that same modification of an, an existing uh, basic SQL script to um, import the database into any other SQL based database. Would you agree with that, Gandhi? Yeah. And also, I think we also had a plan of enhancing uh, the dictionary creator GUI earlier, where we can provide an option to choose the DB and then uh, generate the script for that specific language, but uh, for a specific DB. But I think that will be perfect. Yeah. So Gurgana uh, wants to know how many documents you've processed. Do you have any idea? No, actually, our, our use case was more of uh, the, the product where we have integrated CTX was more of an adverse event uh, uh, reaction tracking product. So basically there, the intake volume was not uh, so huge. So I, I would say like uh, probably uh, the volume was somewhere like uh, 3,000 uh, documents per hour, something like that. That's actually a pretty good rate. Yeah, but we had to spawn, uh, uh, say, like two, three instances of uh, press modulus, as I said, but all talking to the same uh, MySQL DB. Yeah. Yeah, and one thing probably what we wanted to try out uh, was to containerize uh, the MySQL uh, uh, MySQL DB and then even uh, the REST instances uh, so that it will be uh, easy for us to scale in and scale out based on the demand. So that is one thing which is uh, still on our action item, which needs to be tried out. Uh, yeah, to answer the Peter's question, those were not multiple instances, basically those were like kind of uh, different deployments actually. Uh, average word per document, uh, not so sure, sure, but uh, so it will be like some um, thousand words narratives, which has been reported by uh, the patient or the reporter. But it, it, uh, precisely, I don't have the number, but it, it might be say like a thousand words per document or something like that. Okay. Well, if there are no more questions, we're actually coming up on our time. So I think um, thank you is in order. Thank you, Gandhi. And thank you. Yep, that was very interesting. And now i guess everyone has to leave and go into the next session so sure, thanks all thank you thank you